this is we can actually do a measured move to figure out where gold is going to go in 2024 should this pattern break out and essentially you would gain this distance here $460 so if we look at $460 it takes us actually north of 2500 in 2024 and that would complete this head and shoulders breakout pattern so so there you have it there uh, 2024 uh, target price is just above 2500 so again, basically above $25 per ounce on silver. I think that's where you start to really talk about $30 as being a real possibility in 2024. In a recent interview with ITM Trading, Gareth Soloway, a verified technical analyst at Investing.com, made predictions regarding the precious metals market. According to Soloway, he foresees gold reaching $2,500 and silver hitting $30 by 2024. The spot gold market showcased substantial momentum as the Sunday evening session commenced, surpassing critical resistance levels and establishing a new all-time high of $2,148.99 within the initial half hour of trading. Analyst Gareth attributed gold's surge to optimism for sooner lower interest rates, contrasting a higher for longer scenario. The triggering of stops at $2,100 and expectations of future monetary expansion played a role. Gareth emphasized the significance of the bullish inverse head and shoulders pattern, activated with a daily close above $2,080. He also noted that gold is gaining favor among investors as a protective asset against economic uncertainties. Matt Simpson, market analyst at City Index and Forex.com, wrote on X that traders need to be cautious about what this move means for gold prices as it happened while liquidity was low. According to a recent World Gold Council, WGC survey, 24% of central banks plan to increase their gold reserves in the next 12 months. This decision comes as these banks express growing pessimism about the U.S. dollar as a reliable reserve asset. The WGC reported a historic high of 374.1 tons of gold purchased by central banks this year. Notably, China has been actively diversifying its reserves, with the People's Bank of China adding 78 tons in the third quarter alone, bringing its total gold reserves to 2,192 tons. Gareth underscores the importance of logical thinking in interpreting these developments. He suggests that if central banks, the entities responsible for currency issuance, choose to invest in gold, it likely holds significant implications for the market's direction. Before diving into Gareth Soloway's insightful interview, subscribe to our channel and give this video a big thumbs up. No, I actually think this is the real deal for gold. So we're at a point where where the consolidation that we've seen now for the last two years, actually the last three years from the highs in 2020, it looks like we're going to reattack that high at around 2080. And historically, if you look at data sets, when you hit a trend line three times, it usually doesn't break out. Once you get to the fourth or the fifth time, you usually do see the breakout. So what we can see here is you had you had the first hit right here, the second hit right here third hit right here and we're coming up underneath for the fourth hit so i do think this is the real deal it also creates a, a inverse head and shoulder pattern formation here uh let me see if i can draw it on my chart here yeah so we have this sort of pattern formation inverse head and shoulder patterns are very very bullish and they usually break out uh in in kind and you can see shoulder head and shoulder and the beautiful thing about this is we can actually do a measured move to figure out where gold is going to go in 2024 should this pattern break out and essentially you would gain this distance here $460 so if we look at $460 it takes us actually north of 2500 in 2024 and that would complete this head and shoulders breakout pattern so so there you have it there uh 2024 uh target price is just above 2500 i do think 2024 gold is continuing to be the the best performing asset um it wasn't obviously this year we saw bitcoin doing much much better um that one had obviously a huge bounce after a massive decline right. um i think safe wise gold has been the stellar asset like if you're looking to protect your capital while also gaining then gold right. has been phenomenal but certainly we've seen tech stocks remain buoyant uh, and obviously bitcoin do very very well but i think again in terms of safety and hedging 2024 where i do think again that that equities there's a lot of risk there if we hit a recession we know that the yield curve when the yield curve uninverts which we haven't seen yet that's when the recession happens we also know historically that when when the fed actually starts cutting rates usually markets historically sell off so if we are going to get rate cuts in 2024 that's not necessarily the best thing for the stock market so 
most important thing to remember on gold is this, is that if you look at what central banks have been buying over the last year, they have been loading the boat on gold. They are, remember, remember they are the ones that are, the, their finger is on the printing presses. So if the people printing the money are buying gold, think about it logically. It tells you everything you need to know about where exactly. gold is heading. Gareth suggests that a potential breakout for silver could occur if it surpasses the critical level of $25 per ounce with a target of $30 per ounce as a real possibility in 2024. Currently, the price is fluctuating around the initial level, and we are awaiting positive momentum to support a continuation of the bullish trend, expecting further gains in the upcoming sessions. Meanwhile, in response to market expectations for aggressive interest rate cuts, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell stated on Friday that it is premature to declare victory over inflation. This statement aligns with Gareth's anticipation that the Federal Reserve might implement rate cuts in 2024. However, Gareth expresses concern that more than such measures may be needed to address potential economic challenges. Let's get back to the interview. The silver chart is is looking good. It's not as good as the gold chart. The gold chart is very close to the all-time highs, as we know, that triple kind of quadruple top. Silver, though, is making a beautiful run, right? And by the way, you mentioned this before, too, but like once you see institutions start talking about gold, it makes you a little nervous. <laughs> right. Well, same right. thing. When you start seeing trending silver squeeze or, or whatever, it makes me a little nervous that things right. are getting a little ahead of themselves. The one thing I say, I say is you have a very clear trend line here to watch. Right. So it doesn't take a genius to just say, OK, well, this is your trend line. We're still below it. So therefore, silver has not broken out. If we get above this level here, then silver actually can break out. And I think that's going to be the key. So so again, basically above twenty five dollars per ounce on silver. I think that's where you start to really talk about thirty dollars as being a real possibility in twenty twenty four. It does depend on what the Fed will do. But again, to me, I'm seeing seeing economic data that just continues to slowly get weaker. And if we look at the two thousand and seven into two thousand and eight period in the stock market, what we saw was very strong economic numbers month after month after month month, then slightly weaker, slightly weaker, and it fell off a cliff. And I think the same thing is going to happen here, where yes, you probably will see rate cuts in 2024 by the Federal Reserve. But my guess is it's coming where investors start to be frantic, like can the Fed cut enough? Are they cutting too slow? Are we going to see inflation roar back? All of these fears are going to come to the forefront in 2024, even when the Fed starts cutting rates. And I actually think that drives stock prices lower. Because remember, if the Fed is being forced to cut rates, rates, it tells you what is going on in the economy, and it's not good if they're being forced to. And I think the combination of, you know, the dollars continuing to get weaker as the Fed comes back in play for printing, um, a de-dollarization slow and steady, but it is it is slowly occurring. Uh, the drive for the safety of gold, the hedge of gold, the, the volatility or lack thereof for gold investments, all of those probably do drive up the price of gold. And I think, again, inflation to me, we've come down into the mid to low threes now, but again, we're not at 2%. And the Fed, again, are they going to be forced to cut rates before we hit 2%? And does that then trigger another wave of inflation where they have to be very, very concerned about? And I think that's what Jerome Powell's worried about. He doesn't want to repeat the issues that occurred in the 70s right. and 80s. And he said that multiple times. And we could see that happening. Lukeman Otunuga, ForexLive.com, quote, S Market Analysis Manager, highlights the current support for precious metals, attributing it to Federal Reserve rate cut expectations and ongoing technical factors. Without new fundamental catalysts, Otunuga sees a monthly close above $2,000 in November as a critical factor for bullish sentiment, possibly driving prices higher. An expected range for today's silver trading indicates support at $25.10 and resistance at $26.00. How will ongoing market dynamics and potential Federal Reserve actions shape the trajectory of precious metal prices in the coming months? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.